Boy, am I excited to be kicking this off. You guys, if you know me very well, you know this is probably my favorite topic. We're kicking off the 2023 Sturgis Series. So I started this channel two years ago, two and a half years ago, I don't remember, a while back, by actually just coming out here during the whole pandemic thing, bored out of my mind, and I did some videos about Sturgis, and they were an absolute blast, and some of you really valued them, and, and it was just a ton of fun, and I just plan on doing them every year because things change, and maybe I never found those videos, so we're just gonna go ahead and do this all over again. So this is the 2023 Sturgis Prep Series. I've been going to Sturgis since I was 12, 13, 13. Thir I turned 13 while we were there. I won't say what year, but it was a long time ago. Anyway, so my old man made terrible decisions, and so he took me to Sturgis years ago. <laughs> right before I turned 12, I actually, my birthday is the week of Sturgis every year, so I turned 13 while I was there. And it affected me in a way that is not appropriate for the YouTube video world, but I saw things that a young man cannot unsee. It awakened stuff in here that made me go, well, I'll be doing this every year until I die. And that's kind of what started it. So I haven't gone every year, but I've gone many, many years, many, many times. And I've done the whole camp in a tent, camp in a pop-up, camp in an RV, stay in a hotel, haven't done Airbnb, but I've done all that stuff. So what I like to do is these videos every year, just sort of share what I've learned, what I've seen, what works, what doesn't work. May not be accurate every time or the right thing for you, but typically pretty useful. So let's go ahead and kick it off with how in the hell do you get to Sturgis, South Dakota? There's less sun in my face right here. So I figured this might be better. But anyway, so how do you get to Sturgis, South Dakota and why is that even a thing? Well, it's a thing because Sturgis is not exactly a big city. It's a tiny town and a part of the United States that is not heavily populated, right? So how do you even get there? Well, the judgmental people have already gotten excited. I can see them. They're warming up their hot pockets. They're telling mom, hang on, don't tell me nothing for a while. I have comments to write like that. It's already begun. I know it. I know it's like, let it begin. They're all fired up. Anyway, so there's a lot of ways you can get there. You can ride your motorcycle to Sturgis. They're all, whew, oh, he said it. Oh, they're all verklempt or whatever. But you can ride your motorcycle to Sturgis. That's fine. More power to you, all that stuff. There are plenty of great videos on how to pack your bike and all that stuff, and what you need, what you don't need, blah, 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 blah. And if you ride, I assume that means you're either tenting, hoteling it, or airbnb it. Because actually, I was about to say, I guess you're not pulling your RV behind your bike, but my good friends, Nicole and Pipes, who stay at New, uh, Glencoe every year, they actually do have a little, little pop-up RV they pull behind their motorcycle because, so I guess that, that can be done. But most of you probably don't have that. So you're either tenting or mo motelling, hoteling, holiday, in, sorry, or, a, or, a, or a staying on an Airbnb, which is sort of a newer option these days. So there, you can ride your motorcycle. And if you don't ride your bike, you're not a real biker. Side note, anyone who says real biker, not a real biker, because they don't say that. I know a whole lot of gray bearded dudes who typically know to keep their mouth shut about stuff. But anyway, um, the other option would be to trailer your bike. Not the only other. Ah! Just a bunch of dudes need a safe space now, just because I said it. God forbid you trailer your bike. Dude, you do you. I remember what started me on a rampage about this a couple years ago is this lady talking about trucking her bike. She had it back of a pickup truck. And she said, does anybody know if there's a ramp there to unload? And dude, you know, these douchebags immediately attacked this lady. If you don't ride, you ain't real. I mean, saying some mean shit to this lady. And then she's like, I'm trucking my bike because I'm bringing my daughter for her only chance to go to Sturgis because she's disabled. And it was like, well, asshole, how you feel now about just mouthing off? You know, so I hope they... they felt about as tiny as they are. But there's a lot of reasons why you might do that. Maybe you have back problems, hip problems. Maybe your bike is vintage. Don't want to ride it that far. Maybe maybe you just don't want to, right? Because you're a goddamn red-blooded American who works for a living and can do whatever you want. People, leave people alone. Keep your opinions to yourself. You do you, boo-boo, and leave everyone else alone. Anyway, so you trail your bike. Fine, whatever. 
Maybe you trailer your bike because you have an RV. Fine, that's what I do. Can't exactly pull 14,000 pounds on my road glide. I don't think it would handle well. But anyway, so is that. You could truck your bike, put your bike in the bed of the truck, drive that some bitch up there. That's what we did in 19 many, many years ago. Um, is uh, the, the dad's bike was in the back of the truck, it was a sporty 1200. Wasn't gonna ride that all the way, Sturgis. Sporty 1200, and we pulled a pop up camper behind the pickup. You can do that. Um, you could ship your bike, right? There's a whole lot of services. Uh, haulbikes.com is one I know of real well. Haven't used them, haven't ever done that, but haul bikes is good. They deliver your bike to, I think, a couple places. So I'm no expert here. They deliver your bike to the Rapid City Airport. If you fly in, that's your airport. The code is RAP. Um, they deliver there at the Rapid City Airport. I think they might deliver other places. I don't know if you can get it delivered into Sturgis or at the chip or whatever, but I don't know why you would because your bike's being shipped, then you can probably get to the airport somehow. They set up a trailer out in the parking lot there and it's not difficult. So anyway, you can haul your bike and back your truck. You can pull it on a trailer. You can ride it. You can do whatever you want. That's fine, dandy, whatever you do you. But somehow get to the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. The only other topic I'm going to talk about in this video, besides how to get there, is what it costs. Now, it can be done on the cheap. Neil DeWitt, who follows the channel and has been in the side chat a lot, it's a great dude. I see him, I've seen him, met him a couple times, multiple times all over the place. He is real good at doing it on the cheap. Not because he has to, because he wants to. It's kind of a hobby. Uh, he does the whole uh, breakfast in the morning at the VFW lodges and finds inexpensive meals and, you know, tent camping is going to be a lot cheaper and all that sort of stuff. He, he is real good at it and I think gets it done for around a thousand bucks to fifteen hundred. I'm impressed because I, I don't think I could pull it off even if I was tent camping at that. Maybe it's just because I drink a lot though. Could be it. You can only haul so much, right? Anyway, uh, my budget varies, but it's... <laughs> Hold on, don't, just, just get ready. It's around $9,000. That's, that's my budget uh, for how I get, uh, what I spend at Sturgis Rally. Now, hang on now, before you all melt down, there's a whole lot of distance involved here, kind of touching back on the how you get their thing, trailer, or something, the other. I live in South Florida. And those of you who don't know Florida, it's the, the droopy, flaccid, you know what, of the United States. It's long. It's a long distance from South Florida to the Georgia line, you know, before you even go past that. Well, it's about 2,400, 2,400 and change miles each way my Sturgis ride is. So it's about, I always get home somehow 4,900 and change by having to run to the airport once or twice or whatever during, the, during while I'm up there and all that stuff. And, you know, an accident on the damn turnpike which takes me 100 miles up some rural mountain in Georgia almost killing people to come back to 75. To the, it's happened. So anyway, so around uh, 4,900 and change miles I do round trip. So that's another reason why I trailer, by the way, is it's really far. So, um, and then the, uh, back to the budget thing, the reason why that adds to my costs is I have a one ton diesel pickup truck pulling again, 14,000 pounds of RV. So I average, starts good in Florida. You know, my first seven, eight hours before I hit the state line. Yeah, it's that long before I get to Georgia. Uh, nine, I get in Florida from Missouri. So Florida. And then it just goes, Phew! and I end up <laughs> sub seven by the time I get to uh, uh, actually get to Sturgis. I'm in the like 6.97, 7.1 miles a gallon at $9,000 a gallon or whatever the hell diesel is going to be by the time I leave here. Hopefully less. Right now in Florida, just so you could gauge it, right now in Florida, it's $3.69 a gallon for diesel right chair right around my house. If it goes down, you know, that can fluctuate. If it fluctuates 50 cents, Think about this now. Oh man, I'm gonna do math on camera. This is terrifying. Let's call it 5,000. If I get one mile to the gallon more and you're going 5,000 miles, that's gonna have an impact. But to make a short story long, my fuel budget is between three and $3,500. Just to pull my rig, you know, to Sturgis and back. So that's a huge impact. Uh, my RV spot. This is where the RV, while it costs a bunch to get it there, saves me some money because while you're spending, 
let's call it 2500 anywhere from two for a Roach Hotel to three to $3,500 for a hotel room. I am there for 10 nights for somewhere around 750, 800 for my RV spot, and that's power, water, and sewer where I'm staying this year. Uh, and then I gotta buy wristbands for me and the wife, so that adds another six on. So call it $1,300, you know? So anyway, so $1,300 for my accommodations where you're paying at least two for a shithole uh, up to 3500 and again for probably fewer nights because most uh, hotelers uh, that I know don't go as long as I do. If you're staying in a hotel for 10 nights then you, it's going to get real expensive but I'm typically there 10 nights. I'm going in circles right now. Anyway, so sorry about that. Um, so there's that. So the hotel is that uh, and then I typically budget somewhere around 2500 to three grand for whatever what I call blow money, and I don't mean money for blow, I mean beers and cocktails and terrible fair food. I mean, it's really good, but terrible for you fair food. And t-shirts, even though I don't buy many of those anymore and that kind of crap. And maybe if you hunted for uh, some new accessory that I've never seen before that I really won't want to see it, even though I don't feel like anything's new anymore. But, you know, that kind of stuff. So 2500 to maybe even three grand for blow money. Um, and I got to actually mentioned the wife always keeps a little rat hole money herself so it's probably more than that that we actually spend um so we got that and then you got other things that i'm not thinking of right now maybe that is most of the budget isn't it fuel to get there your campground admissions the rv spot and your blow money is most of a where are you going could you hear the mazda he was like qualifying for formula oh going down the damn road um anyway so it's 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 that nine thousand ish dollar thing i'm not thinking of so oh wife's flights because the wife can't take as much time off as i can and we have a little and so she you know does a lot to take care of her uh so that i can go on the road she's a saint so that's typically airline tickets are expensive when you're flying in the middle of nowhere so she flies into either Rapid this year or, or Sioux City. Matter of fact, this year she's flying into Sioux City, going to do the last day on the road with me. I'm going to pick her up on the way, and then she's flying out of Rapid. So that's, that's an expensive ticket from, you know, Fort Lauderdale to middle of nowhere, South Dakota and back. So anyway, so that's kind of the budget. I do have a spreadsheet for this. If you want to email me at demunk at professional-monkey.com, I'll send the spreadsheet that I actually made last year and you can screw around with your own numbers. There's a fuel calculation and all that stuff in it. Um, anyway, and I might tweak it this year to give options for people. So I'm, if you want it, email me at professional, uh, at, I'm sorry, D-A-M-O-N-K, demonk at professional-monkey.com and I'll send that to you. So again, not the most exciting video because it's all about how to get there and what it costs. But next video, I'll talk about where to stay because I've done several different campgrounds and visited a lot. Uh, I've stayed in hotels. Uh, I haven't done the Airbnb, but friends have, and that kind of stuff. And I'll give you my impressions on things like the Sturgis Buffalo Chip and Glencoe and, and where we're staying this year. And one that I haven't been to, but I'm excited to, uh, I'm really excited to visit this year. We're going to go ahead and announce it now. We are kicking off our Sturgis this year on Thursday, August the something. What the hell? Hang on. Sorry. I'm just going to look. So I'll sing for you. La, 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 la. Yeah, Thursday, August the 3rd okay we're gonna do a pre-rally kickoff so those of you that go up early a lot of people do thursday august the third is the last night before as we affectionately refer to it as the circus comes to town so the rally starts on friday august 4th officially and then goes 10 days the following sunday the 13th i don't see i don't prepare it's just not a, it's not i'm not good at it yeah Sunday the 13th. So the official dates of the rally are Friday, August 4th to Sunday the 13th. A lot of people come in before that because there's fewer people on the road and the amateurs aren't in town and Needles Highway and Iron Mountain Road are easier to get up and down when you're not, don't have a bunch of yahoos on, on dinas trying to do burnouts. I actually saw that guy drifting around a turn last year. Um, so on Thursday, August the 3rd, Jasmine Kane, one of my favorite rally performers on earth and a good friend, uh, even though she insults me when I carry her amps because they're heavy and she's a strong little South Dakota chick who is somehow part forklift. But anyway, um, that is a real story there. I helped her tear down one night, carry her amps to her trailer, and she laughed and made fun of me. I love her, but she's not nice. 
Anyway, so Jasmine Kane is playing kickstands. So kickstands, bar and grill, and campground is a great destination that a ton of people love. It's not been around a long time, but it's got a beautiful piece of property right there off uh, I-90. I-90 is the main drag, so if you drive or pull, well, that's what you're going to do is you end up on 90 and you go all the way across, the, unless you're coming from California. You're going all the way across the state, east to west on, on I-90. I um, on I-90 right there at Pleasant Valley Road, I think, is the exit. Same exit if you're going to take the rural back way to the Buffalo Chip. But that, that right there, right when you get off I-90, is kickstands, bar and grill, and campground. They're open year-round. Food is phenomenally, is, is, is supposedly phenomenal. I haven't been there yet, but I heard they're really, really good. Jasmine's playing the night of August the 3rd, and we are having a pre-rally kickoff party. So me and Mrs. Monkey are going to be there, again, Thursday, August 3rd, before the circus comes to town, when only the professionals are in Sturgis, right? So Thursday, August 3rd, kickstands, campground, and bar and grill. Us, me, Mrs. Monkey, Jasmine Kane, her hubby Kevin, the whole band, they're going to perform. They're going to tear it up as they always do. It's going to be fantastic. Have good food, good drinks, hang out with us. Probably your best chance to just hang out with us all night because there'll be fewer people. It's not going to be a massive event, and that is freaking sweet. So come hang out with us. Thursday, August 3rd, at kickstands. We're going to have a good time. Get ready for the whole series. I'll kick this off. I don't know, kind of carpet bomb them along the way so that you're all getting ready for Sturgis. Love y'all to death. Take care of each other out there. We'll talk real soon. Bye.